Hey everybody, Joe Bergamini here for the Sabian Education Network. This video series is Things I Wish My Drum Teacher Taught Me. Now, that's kind of a funny title. Actually, this is something that if you teach, you can use this information to help your students. This is things I've seen happen with my students that I think uh, a teacher could really help them with. So, uh, if you have a teacher, ask them to help you with these kinds of things. I've noticed that some students come in if they've never had a teacher, they haven't really thought about this or no one's watched them and told them to do it. So, and if you don't have a teacher, keep in mind that it's great to learn on your own, it's great to learn from online video, but there's nothing like having a drum teacher to stand in there and watch you and correct exactly what you need personally and be your personal coach. So, let's start with, I actually wanna just talk about something I've seen with my students, which is getting a good sound out of the instruments. So I'm gonna do a couple of videos with that in mind, and let's start with the cymbals. So getting a good sound out of your cymbals. It might seem obvious, um, but let's just talk about that. So uh, I actually have here some of the new Sabian AAX. Uh, I have two thin, uh, thin Crash 16, 17, and 19, a 22 inch heavy ride, and 14 inch medium hats. I have a few other toys up here. I have a Stax, uh, some mini hats over here, Aero splashes 8 and 10, and 18 inch china, and an A explosion china over here. But let's just focus on first simply getting a good sound out of your crash cymbals. And when you play a crash cymbal, it seems pretty straightforward, but there's a couple things that I've noticed that you should keep in mind that my students sometimes don't do. One is you need to come off the cymbal so that you don't put a lot of stress on the cymbal and eventually break it. No matter how good quality of a cymbal you have, if you hit it too hard the wrong way, it'll break. So holding the stick very loose, okay? You wanna So I'm trying not to play kind of through the cymbal and hit it really hard and not get off of it. Let me try to demonstrate what that would look like. So if I'm just playing into it like that, it could break. So. Now, getting a good sound on a crash, I have my crashes tilted towards me a little bit, and one of the reasons I have that is because it helps me to lay my stick, the shoulder of my stick, across the cymbal and really get it to ring by laying the shoulder across and getting a nice thick sound out of it. A crash doesn't really sound very good when you hit it with the tip of your stick, okay? So that would sound like this. not really a full, really good sound. You wanna lay your shoulder across like this. Okay, and I'll do it again. I'll hit each cymbal so you get an idea. So relax, get off of that cymbal, really let it ring, and make sure you use the shoulder of the stick to hit it. Now, if you, hit, if you play the cymbal more flat, a lot of people like to do that because they like the feeling of hitting it flat and it looks cool. Um, you just have to be careful not to hit the edge perpendicular too much because it can put a lot of stress on the edge and it can eventually break it. My sticks don't really wear that much. Um, they do nick, but they don't wear that much because I'm hitting across the top of the cymbal like that and I'm doing it pretty much with all my cymbals, including the china. And so that really helps you get a good sound, okay? Um, let's quickly talk about the ride cymbal. Now the ride cymbal, of course, if you are playing patterns on it in your traditional way, you will use the tip. And the place where most people would start to play the ride cymbal to get your typical rock beat sound, I'll demonstrate something like that. So if you're playing a groove, you wanna kinda of be halfway between the bell and the edge of the cymbal. If you play a ride cymbal too close to the edge, and I notice this with a lot of my younger students. If you play the ride cymbal too close to the edge, it starts to wash in a different way that usually most of the time for your typical rock, R&B, pop, and funk playing isn't what you want. I'll demonstrate that. So there's a lot of low end wash there. When you hit it in the halfway between the bell and the edge, you get a much more focused sound with some wash and it sounds really good. As you get closer to the bell, the sound tightens up. So if you play in that area, you wanna make sure that that's the sound you intend to get. And then the other two basic sounds out of your ride cymbal would be 
playing the bell, which I generally do with the shoulder of the stick, kind of gets the thickest, most, most full sound out of the bell. Sounds like this. So once again, I'm playing with this part of the stick. You can play it with the tip, doesn't sound as thick, especially if you're doing bell to bow patterns. I'll, I'll do that and I'll show you what it sounds like with the tip. Okay, you know, you can still hear the bell, but when you use the, the shoulder of the stick on the bell and the tip on the bow, you get this. And obviously it's a lot more distinct. That's what most pros are doing in rock when they play that way. And finally, when you crash the rod cymbal, I use the shoulder of the stick just like I do on the crash cymbal. So I'll just play and I'll try to get a little bit of all those sounds out of the ride. If you haven't checked out the Sabian Education Network, go to sabianed.com and sign up.